Hello, uh, my name is Tomasz Drab, and I will present uh, our joint work with Małgorzata Brynacka, who is also present here, and Witold Haratonik about probably efficient implementation of strong call by need. Uh, and as usually, uh, I will start with motivating and explaining parts of the title. So first, why call by need? Uh, as we have seen already, uh, we have two well-known approaches in programming languages, uh, evaluation orders, call by name and call by value, and both have some advantages. Uh, one of the advantages of call by name is that it doesn't evaluate unneeded arguments, uh, while call by value uh, gives us that it evaluates all arguments at most once. And we can join these two properties in call by need uh, to evaluate only needed arguments and uh, at most once. Okay, so now let's uh, proceed with strong, why we are interested in strong, re strong reduction. As an example, let's consider uh, church numerals. Uh, let's take church two, which is a function that applies given function twice. And in church arithmetic, we can implement uh, multiplication just as a, a function composition. Uh, and now let's try to compute uh, two times two. Uh, in so-called weak reduction, we can substitute the two twos for n and for m. Uh, and again, is it an answer? Because is it a result? Because in a weak reduction, we cannot go further. And because uh, what we call weak reduction is that we don't reduce on the lambdas. Uh, and of course, we can do the same with strong reduction, but strong reduction can go under lambda. In, and if some, in some extra steps on, under this lambda f, uh, we can normalize the whole term and obtain a result that is equal to church numeral four. So it is nice, <laughs> I like it. But more importantly, uh, is full reduction is applied in type checking uh, in proof assistance. Uh, so now uh, the question why efficient is a quite obvious question. We can focus on in what sense efficient. And we are interested in uh, asymptotic time complexity, uh, which depends on two uh, parameters. Uh, the first one is size of the initial term. And we should somehow depend on it because we have to read the whole term if we want to fully normalize it. And the second one is number of beta reductions. We simulate the number of beta reductions uh, the term does. Uh, because the term can even diverge and it's uh, hard to pay the whole cost of the computation with only size of the initial term. So we take also a number of beta reductions uh, into account. And technically speaking, uh, it was proposed to call efficient implementations uh, these who, that um, are linear in both of these parameters. So linear complexity is quite good. Uh, implementation would be efficient if it would be linear in both of them. And uh, abstract machines are quite good tools to navigate the cost models uh, complexity. Uh, so if we take a look at abstract machines for strong call by need, uh, we can find a description of full reducing strong call by need normalization uh, in a research report of uh, Dan V and his uh, then doctoral students uh, that they describe how to derive such a machine and it is quite understandable how it would work. Uh, another one is a abstract machine of my co-authors uh, that implements strong call by need strategy 
uh, presented at ICFP uh, five years ago. But both abstract machines uh, I'm aware of uh, suffer from exponential overhead uh, in the complexity. Uh, so we'd like to improve <laughs> on, on that matter. Uh, so the plan, further plan of this presentation will be uh, to show how to derive an efficient machine for strong call by need. Technically speaking, with this technical uh, notion of e efficiency, it is quasi-efficient because uh, it is quasi-linear -li in uh, size of the initial term, but in common meaning, it is still efficient. <laughs> uh, then we will uh, talk about correctness of this machine, uh, how do we can how we can say that it is strong call my need and its complexity analysis and then i would like to remark on two interesting i think aspects of uh, of our uh, work it is an empirical approach and implicit sharing that is employed in our analysis okay uh, it is Already my third talk, <laughs> a conference talk, where uh, functional correspondence is a crucial tool, tool to obtain uh, the result. So we've already put an online video with an example of functional correspondence uh, in the web. Uh, so I will just uh, describe more or less how it works. Uh, we can to define an, um, a language, for example, um, called by need evaluator, we can just uh, write a program that exe executes uh, this language. But then some aspects of, of this defined language are hidden in, uh, at the meta level, because it depends on meta language how it, uh, for example, what is the evaluation order. So, to make it explicit, we can do a CPS translation of such an interpreter, and then it is more uh, visible to, to read. Uh, or, uh, and the same, uh, still, it may be not obvious how do we evaluate higher order functions, uh, so we can defunctionalize such an interpreter of a defined language. And that was known, that was described by John C. Reynolds uh, in the 70s. Uh, and in the next century, the same team of Dundee uh, elaborated on, on this uh, process, of this mechanization process, and observed, um, described, that it's a way to obtain an abstract machine for a, from a functional code. And we can also reverse this process and deconstruct an abstract machine to maybe change something in the code and um, obtain other uh, abstract machines. And uh, more recently, uh, Bushka and Birnatsky uh, enriched our linguistic uh, technology with uh, automatization of uh, the process of machine uh, construction. So how our derivation of implementation of, of our abstract machine uh, worked? We've started with uh, Krigit's KN uh, abstract machine that is known to implement normal order, which is strong call by name strategy of the Lambda calculus. And we've used uh, the construction of this machine to a functional code. So then we can take Occam, or in our case, Rocket, and uh, change something in that code to be more called by need. So we've added standard uh, memoization techniques. Uh, we've added them on two levels, let's say on the weak level of evaluation and on the strong level of normalization, mm. and applied other changes also, for example, uh, getting rid of the brown indices uh, which are present in the KN machine and it's the construction. And then by automated construction, we've uh, obtained the, uh, the 
RKNL abstract machine. Uh, we can take a look at it. Uh, it looks like that. It consists of uh, 11 transition rules. Uh, we can observe that it works on standard lambda uh, terms. Uh, it is environment-based, so sometimes environment is also passed with, by this machine. Uh, it also has a stack uh, to, to, that represents continuation or, or evaluation context, which will be more important later, uh, and an explicit store to, to deal with the memoization. Uh, so in this form, this interpreter is a store passing interpreter. And having an abstract machine, we can experiment with it and observe uh, its computational steps empirically. Uh, and um, it gives us a natural cost model, like one transition is, is uh, a unit of complexity. But coming back to this picture now, we can wonder, what is this creature that uh, the RKNL implements? What, what is this strategy? Uh, because we know we could, we could do something arbitrarily stupid in modification of this code. Uh, we could do also something wiser, for example, change the st strategy from call by name to call by value. So what is, the, what is it that RKNL implements? Uh, I think the easier part is to observe that what we've obtained uh, conservatively extends al already known KL abstract machine, which is weak, but called by need uh, abstract machine. So uh, we are happy with this uh, by need component. And now we would like to connect it with something strong to have, strong call by need. And, uh, because then we could have, uh, we would have an abstract machine for strong call by need. So we ask if it really implements uh, still this normal order. Did we uh, preserved that property? And to prove that, we used another abstract machine, which is uh, of more theoretical than practical uh, flavor. Uh, it is more explicit, it has more um, invariance explicit. For example, the grammar of stacks is not just a list of terms, uh, but uh, their grammar uses two non-terminals, and uh, this grammar uh, provides that every reduction step uh, is done in leftmost, outermost context, uh, that characterizes normal order reduction. Uh, but uh, this ghost ab abstract machines that traces the, our RKNL machine uh, have some, would have some additional cost to, to coerce between neutral terms and normal terms. And this is why we didn't want it uh, in the practical machine. It has also, uh, the store split it into two stores, uh, one, one for each memoization we've added. Uh, and let's summarize that thanks to this uh, analysis of uh, stack shapes, shape of uh, evaluation context, we know that this abstract machine implements also normal order uh, strategy. And the second part is complexity analysis uh, that is done with potential function uh, inspired by Chris Okasaki and, and potential functions for uh, persistent data structures. Uh, the potential function is designed to decrease with every step of uh, computation. Uh, so these uh, components uh, Con connected with application uh, decrease uh, the number of uh, steps to do uh, by one. And if we take a look at RKNL again and we apply potential function, it decreases as we want it on every uh, transition rule but one. Uh, 
And the, the one remaining rule uh, is this rule uh, responsible for beta uh, reduction. Uh, and it is a rule where uh, the potential increases, but we can balance the inequality uh, with the potential of the in initial term. Uh, so uh, by these two properties of decrease and increase, we have uh, a following theorem that the long, uh, length of ex execution can be uh, bounded by such a product. And uh, we can also note that uh, this bound is with respect to normal order beta reductions. Uh, so it also improves the state of the art for norm normal order from quadratic to quasi bilinear in bilinear number of steps. And uh, promised note on empirical method. It is quite nice that with implementation, we can run just uh, these machines and count how many inter integer steps uh, are done. So it is really reproducible in, uh, on other computers. And we can uh, make some hypothesis how many steps it takes. Uh, it, it is how this table was uh, prepared. And then if we want, we can prove formally uh, this closed formulas. And uh, another note is the size explosion problem uh, named by Akatoli and Dallago, uh, that this exponential overhead in abstract machines uh, often comes from uh, the fact that in n reductions, we can obtain a term that is exponentially big in n. Uh, and our machine uh, deals with it by implicitly sharing references to the reused uh, subterms. So in the end, we have such a representation, which is implicitly sharing uh, potentially big, uh, potentially exponentially big terms. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we have implemented uh, an abstract machine that probably efficiently implements a strong uh, call by need. Uh, abstract uh, strong, uh, strategy, and it was done thanks to the functional programming. Thank you for your attention, and I'm curious of your questions and comments. 